What's up Smarties and welcome to Camp Wonderopolis. I have never played it before. Now if you haven't hit that subscribe button then hit it and also hit the like button because I really love it when I get new subscribers. So let's get started with the game. Now what? am i meant to do i don't know my camp diary no wait what i want to go to my wonder cards i think uh okay why are bowling shoes slippery okay um what is this we're fairly certain that there aren't any bowling shoes out there made out of either recycled banana skins or space-age polymers. It's also highly unlikely that bowling alleys are using any special lubricants on their shoes. So what's going on here? If you've ever been to a bo at a bowling alley... You know that they don't allow you to wear just any old shoes on their super slick claims. Bowling alleys offer their very own bowling shoes for rental as soon as you walk in the door. As you pay for your games, you're asked for your shoe size so, you, so that you can be issued a pair of bowling shoes to use during your games. Although they're probably not the most attractive shoes you've ever worn... Bowling shoes do, do, do serve an important purpose. Usually made of a combination of leather and rubber, bowling shoes feels, feature slippery soles and there are a couple of good reasons why. Okay, what is this? Oh, the picture. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, the slippery surface of bowling shoes allowed you allows you to slide easily along the po polished wood surface of bowling lanes. Okay, as you approach the lane to release the ball towards the pins, it's important to be able to move sm very smoothly so that your release is as controlled as possible. The heels are of bowling shoes are usually made of rubber to make it easy to break your slide as soon as you release the ball. People who bowl might often might even have their own custom bowling shoes that have rubber soles on their non-sliding foot and have and a slippery sole on their sliding foot. Renting shoes to bowlers also allowed bowling alleys to keep their wood lane surfaces in tip-top shape. It, it would be much harder to keep playing surfaces in good condition if all sorts of different shoes were worn regularly, regularly including shoes that might, attract, might track in dirt, rocks and other items that could scratch the lanes. Okay, this is about shoes. Hmm. Okay. Have I not? Yeah, this is the same picture. Yeah, it is. Um, there's nothing quite light heading to... Yeah, okay. Um, bowling is the perfect sport for you to... For, for you... Math. What? I think it means for your math... Quizzes. In addition to practicing your addition skills by keeping score, you can also combine your lo knowledge of geometry and physics to guide the ball down the lane into the pins. And it's the same. No one knows for sure when bowling shoes were invented, but historians believe a leather bowling shoe may have been introduced in the United States as early as 1888. That's how long families have been enjoying the sport of bowling. Okay. This seems to be all reading. Um, okay. Split.
explore explore more lessons. Um, okay. Do I just scroll up to the top and go back? Or um, change lesson? Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Change track. Yes, I think. Wait, what? Uh, I want to get back there. Um, how come I don't have the cards? My camp diary. No, what am I doing? Um, and I don't know how to earn the cards exactly. My camp diary. See. Um. Oh, I think I understand. Oh, go camping. Go camping. Go camp. Yes, I found out how it works. I think. Wonder Coliseum. Hello there. Well, hello there, camper. There's plenty to toss around and catch in this area of camp. Ever wondered why golf balls have. Dimples and blowing shoes are so darn slippery. You've come to the right place. Why do we play games? As a human race, we've been playing games since the beginning of our time here on Earth. We bet even dinosaurs made up games for fun. But why do we play games? Games distract us from everyday life and help expand our minds. Most importantly, games are fun to watch and to play. There are there are card games, board games, sport ge sports games, recess games, video games, you name it. Let's dig a little deeper into some of our most some of our most favorite pastimes in the Wonder Coliseum. Okay. Uh what do I do? Oh, this is so let's pick, let's do, ah, this is different games, um, what should we do, let's do board games, I think, do you like to play with words, um, words are around us, Oh, word search. Yeah, I like word searches. Words are around us every second of every minute of every day. They're spoken, written and read. They are the tools we use to communicate. Words can inspire us. They can bring us to tears. They can motivate us to action. They can make us laugh. They can uh, arouse every emotion known to man within our hearts. What is this picture? I bet it's a word search, a word. Oh, cross, crosswords. Okay. Scroll down. They can also be fun to play with. If you've ever done a crossword puzzle or a, or a word search, you know word games can be fun. There's even a special type of word play that kids really love. Anagrams. Anagrams are fun for a variety of reasons. An anagram is a is a word game that involves rearranges, rearranging the letters of a word or group of words to make a new word or group of words. The only rule, you have to use all the original letters just once. The original world word or group of words is called the subject of the anagram any word or group of words you make by rearranging the letters of a subject is called an anagram okay earn your wonder card i think i'll earn my wonder card if you're playing a word game that involves rearranging the letters of a word group of words of a word or group of words to make a new word or group of words then you're having fun with what um, anagrams check 
Correct. Next question. Historians have traced the origin of anagrams back to the time of Moses, when anagrams were used to discover what the hidden, the hidden meaning behind what names. Yes. Which of the following is an anagram of the word silent? Listen. Uh, Three more. Which of the following words could be substituted for the word game? Match. Next question. Which of the following words could be an antonym for the word inspire? Inspire. Uh, ooh, wrong. I don't know. Which of the following words could be used in place of the word cryptic? Um, straightforward is not a word. Uh, I forgot. I don't know how to say it. But let's see my results. Five or six questions correctly. And earned a wonder card. Um, okay. No, I don't want to print it down or download PDF. Right. Maybe another time. Hmm. What do I do again? Um. Back. Back. Let's go to Wonder First Aid. We're so glad you've joined us at the area of Camp Wonderopolis focused on health and wellness. We've got a lot to wonder about, from the skin on your back to the air in your lungs, so come on and jump right in. Brain. Uh, left or okay, whatever. I guess I'll find that out in this. This is your brain is divided into two halves called hemispheres. Many people believe that these diff these different sides of the brain, the left and the right control different ways of thinking. Many people also believe that each person uses one side of the brain more than the other. Here's what this might mean. Left brain thinkers are believed to be logical, rational, analytical and objective. They analyse the parts of things to learn how they logically and accurately accurately fit together they're supposedly better at things like language math reasoning and critical thinkers right brain thinkers on the other hand or other brain are believed to be more random subjective and initiative they look at the whole before them and focus on feelings and creativity they're supposedly better at things like music, art and expressing emotion. So let's see. This is a quite a good picture. I'm going to guess. Wait, which side is this? <laughs> Let me go back. Left. I'm going to guess me, maybe. I'm not. Maybe... A left brain? I'm not sure. But then I could be, I don't know. Does one of these types of thinking seem to... Wait, before we carry on this, comment down below what brain you think you have. 
Does one of these types of thinking seem to apply to you? Maybe. Are you a left-brained or logical mathematician? Or are you right-brained free-thinking artist? Of course, you could be both. Both. Some people believe that there are people who are whole brain, which means that they use both sides equally. I think I'm whole brained then because I wasn't too sure on both sides picking a different side, but now I know that I think I'm whole brained. These theories about left and right brain thinking develop from the work of Roger W. Sperry who studied the brain to learn how epilepsy works. Sperry noticed that cutting the structure that connects the two halves of the brain, called the corpus callosum, could reduce or eliminate seizures. Cutting this structure also caused other unique effects that led Sperry to believe that different halves of the brain control different functions. Later research has found that the brain might not be as divided as Sperry thought. For example, researchers have found the mathematical ability is strongest when both halves of the brain work together. See these pictures? Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, what would this picture be? I bet it's every single thing the same. Mm. Earn your wonder card. If you're logical, rational, analytical, and objective, which side of the brain? Hold on, <laughs> I need to check. Uh, uh, <laughs> left brain, right. Uh, top, bottom, <laughs> oh, one out of six, Number, if you're a random subject, yeah, that's right, think about left and right brain function, came from what, scientific, flat feet, no, swollen spleen, no, heart failure, Epilepsy, definitely. It, uh, which of the following words could be substituted for the word live? Exist? Wait, four. Which of the following words is an antonym of the word subjective? Uh, collective or objective or animative or geometry I'm not I'm gonna let's do process of elimination because that's my favorite I'm gonna I think I think I may eliminate geometry and go and pick from these three uh, hmm Subjective. Hmm. Maybe objective. I'm going to eliminate animative and go with collective or objective. I'm going to go with objective. Correct. Which of the following words could be considered an antonym of the words insane and foolish? So first, let's, we've got rational, crazy, stupid, illogical. Right. I'm going to knock out rational, crazy, stupid, illogical. Knocking out stupid. I'm going to go with illogical. Incorrect. Let's see the results. I got five out of six. 
that was probably my favourite one. I think we'll do one more. Let's see. We'll do. Ooh. I'm kind of thinking now whether each, because I got to pick, I picked a car. I'm now wondering whether that's kind of to do, all those pictures were kind of to, I could pick from, were kind of to do with all these because Wonder Weather Station, there was something to do with that. Wonder Snack Bar, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to learn about food. Hmm, do you smell what's cooking at the Wonder Snack Bar in this area of Camp Wonder Wonderopolis, we're boiling, brewing, and baking up some tasty wonders for you to feast on. We hope you fought your appetites. Definitely, that's why I picked it right. <gasps> oh, no, I get to pick food. Which food? 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 I'm gonna go with the burger and chips. Yes, I was think I was thinking of McDonald's when I was looking at it. Who invented the first fast food restaurant? H have you ever been hungry and in a hurry? It's times like these when many people go looking for fast food. But have you ever wanted wondered who invented the fast food restaurant? Was it? A mother of 12 who needed to feed all her children in a hurry? <laughs> Perhaps it was an old German king who loved hamburgers? <laughs> Could it have been an army cook who learned how to feed hundreds of soldiers quickly during the war? You're making me hungry. It's literally McDonald's, fries and a burger. You're making me hungry. Stop it. Comment down below what your favourite fast food restaurant is. The only word for it is... Given the pace of today's modern society, many of us are constantly on the go. When it comes to mealtime, we often don't have enough time to head home to prepare an, a meal. Instead, we look for the nearest fast food restaurant to... Take care of our hunger between in between activities. The world didn't always move at such a fast pace, though. So does that mean fast food restaurants are a relatively new invention? Not exactly. Hamburger five. <laughs> you might be surprised to learn how far back the history of fast food restaurant stretches. Restaurants, in some shape or form, have been around for most of human civilization. Catering to travellers, inns and tav taverns dating back to ancient Greece and Rome were served food to people staying away from home. It was not until 1921 in Wichita, Kansas, the, the fast food restaurant was born in the form of the first White Castle restaurant. Up until that time, hamburgers were mainly sold at fairs from food carts and most people considered them to be a low quality food. White Castle aimed to change America's view of the hamburger. The first White Castle restaurant appeared fit. The first White Castle restaurant featured an open kitchen area where customers could see their food being prepared i want to see i want to see hamburger five yummy can i just say that looks absolutely delicious and that i want to eat it i just want to eat it right off the screen okay now i want something to eat Fast food didn't catch on immediately, but it did begin to slowly develop along with the popularity of the automobile. As Americans became more mobile, frequent travelling, 
led to a desire for quicker food on the go. The assembly line system of food preparation we associate with modern fast food restaurants didn't come about until McDonald's got its start in the 1940s. Ooh. A first McDonald's franchise restaurant restaurant opened its doors in Des Plaines, Illinois, in 1955. It wasn't long before that other fast food restaurants started popping up. Burger King and Taco Bell got started in the 1950s. Wendy's first opened its doors in 1969. One feature of modern fast food restaurants familiar to most children today is the drive through win- window. The first restaurant to feature a drive through with a two way speaker system is considered to be In and Out Burger, a popular California, California franchise that opened in 1948. So, let's do our wonder card wonder card what was the first fast food restaurant white castle what system was mcdonald's responsible for creating first i'm not sure assembly line system of food preparation Automatic milkshakes. I don't know what that's meant to mean. But, okay. (laughs) The invention of what thing helped spur the fast food restaurant industry? Telephone. I actually think it's a telephone. No. Automobile. Yeah. Ah! No! My wonder card died. (laughs) let's just do these automobile next question which of the following words could be substituted for the word want I'm gonna straight away kick out hate (laughs) have kick out Desire or a bore? Uh, Desire. Next question. Which of the follow... Hunger. (laughs) Which of the following sensations might you feel when you need to eat? Definitely not fear. Definitely not anger. Definitely not sadness. Hunger. Which of the following words could be considered a synonym for the word approximately? Precisely. What? Uh, Exactly. (laughs) Hmm. Okay, let's see the um what um hmm when I got wrong. Okay, so I think we're gonna end it for here now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed the, my first look at this new game. It was epic. There was nothing bad about it and it would definitely knock out one of my games in my top 10 video being first place probably the 10th place it would knock out that would make more sense but yeah so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did smash that like button and i'll and don't forget to subscribe good bye